Great. So I am sitting here beautiful outside on the porch with Teddy. Um, and I want to learn a little bit more about you so that more people can know about you. And I know myself that you have a very beautiful heart, but I want other people to know that too. Okay. So if you will just start telling me um, some background. Where, where did you grow up? What are you doing? You know, who, who is Teddy? All right. My name, I grew up in Denver, Iowa. And that's where I am now. I came back to Denver, Iowa. <laughs> so you haven't always lived in Denver. I have not. I, I grew up in Denver, was born and raised here. My parents are Bill and Betty Beeman, and they had restaurant business in the Cedar Valley area. Mm-hmm. And so I grew up in the restaurant business on a farm two and a half miles from here. <laughs> and um, I have four children from a previous marriage and they're all grown and have kids and then I got remarried five years ago and landed two and a half miles from where I grew up so (laughs) now I've got two of my four children live in Denver and are raising their children in Denver too Mm -hmm. awesome yeah and it like I said just a beautiful beautiful location beautiful setting and the way Mark and I met was um I came back to be with my mom when my dad died and ran into him at um, a bar in town and they were having a golf outing and my sister wanted me to come and meet her and there Mark was and we went to school together and I hadn't seen him for 30 years. Uh So we had a great conversation and then... God just took it from there. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. So you will like to, you are a member now of Be Well, God Bless. Yes. And you have some pretty amazing things to share. And, yes. and as I always say, it's like God has given you a gift. He, he has something and um, it, it's in you. It's your passion. And I just want more people to know about it. So why don't you tell us a little bit more about some things that you're going to be sharing on Be Well, God Bless. All right. My um, heart and passion is helping people to, regardless of their circumstances, be able to laugh and rise above it and, and be okay, be able to handle their emotions. My ex-husband had told me that he was going to leave me, and I was totally blindsided. Didn't know that that was going to happen at all. And that same week, I was going to get certified to be a laughter yoga coach. And I was devastated and had decided that I wasn't going to go. And my boss told me that it was non-refundable, so I had to go anyway. And little did I know that that was the very thing that God was going to use to get me through the next two years of my life. So I went, not knowing what to expect, and 22 other women were there. And one was going through cancer. There were two that were losing children to cancer. There was five other people that were going through a divorce. And I found out that I wasn't alone. And all of these people chose to do something besides have a pity party. So from that moment on, I decided that laughter yoga was something that I could use to help people heal through devastating circumstances. And and tell me more, what was that class like, or what did you go through, um, or just what is laughter yoga? Because when, I know you shared this at a presentation. You're like, yeah, I, I wasn't excited, and here's this <laughs> crazy lady on the front of the stage, you know. But mm-hmm. what was it like? Um, what did you feel when you were at the presentation, when you got to the end of the workshop, when you are now certified to do this with other people? Um, what What was in your heart at that point? So when I first walked in the door and we were putting on crazy hats and I thought the lady laughing Laura was a loony (laughs) tune and I was not in the mood to even be there so I didn't even want to be around a happy person. But then after sharing and getting to know everyone and to know how good I felt the first night after I left, regardless, my circumstances were still the same. I still didn't know what was going to happen in my life. But I was lifted to a different level, and I wasn't um, feeling down and out about it. It felt like there was a hope. 
And so then when I went back and we learned even more about each other and started laughing and working through and talking, all of a sudden I realized that um, it's a choice. Like your happiness is a choice. You can choose to be mad or you can choose to be glad. And it just takes some really easy exercises to do to get you to a higher place. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Yeah. And so you teach these exercises. Yes. Yep. yep. Um, I go to a lot of nursing homes, care centers. Um, I've done workshops with men and women um, to help um, lift people to another place and to just help people to enjoy their journey. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So do you, is it, is it a group thing that happens or is it individuals that you do it with? Or you can do it? Um, oh. I mean, I leave people with five happy tools Okay. and, and when they go home, they can use those tools for the rest of their life. So they can use them individually. They can use them with their kids. They can use them um, with other people that they work with. And those happy tools are, um, just everyday exercises that you can use in your daily life to keep you lifted and perked up mm -hmm. because we all know the grumps and the people that you want to stay away from and the people that are Debbie Downers and um, you want to be above that because why would people want to be a Christian if you're mad and sad and crying all the time you mm -hmm. know because that's not the way that that God wants us to be. Mm -hmm. They want us to be able to lift people in it and be encouragers. So um, it's just another way to help people get out of that humdrum mm -hmm. feeling. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. You, you explained <laughs> it wonderfully. Um, you also have some other things that are going to be on this page. Yeah. Right? Tell um, me about them. I also am, right now I'm working on becoming a health coach. And not only do I have a laugh a whittle class, I also have started a lose a whittle. And um, our group right now, just after four weeks, we have lost 47 pounds. <laughs> and we measured the inches this week. And amongst six of us, um, we've lost 13 and a half inches around our waist. So uh, I do a Bible study, I do a skit. And then we weigh and we measure and we exercise in mm. an hour's time. So I do that and I'm hoping that that too will be another addition to my laugh a whittle and lose a whittle mm -hmm. and, and whittle away the worry is my other goal. And that is just to talk to people about different circumstances and different situations that they might be in. Um, that keep getting them down and um, to show them through scripture and through various life um, activities that I've done and skits that I will help people to be able to rise above that as well mm -hmm. and how to get through those difficult times. Mm -hmm. That's cool. So that's kind of where you, you can have a one-on-one -on -one session and time with you right. and, and really get to um, not a one-time necessarily uh, give me the tools, but where you can, can help them through the long t process. Right. Awesome. Um, the other thing I can do is I also am a trainer, not only a teacher, but a trainer. And what a trainer does is I can certify people to do laughter yoga so that they can carry it on and do it in their business. I have one coming up April 22nd that anyone can attend. It's 397 for an eight hour workshop and then you're certified for life. And then you can be involved in all of the laughter yoga sessions, the newsletters, you can go to the um, different laughter yoga events that they have throughout the year and throughout the nation, throughout the world. Mm -hmm. um, they have them in India, it's just nation and worldwide now. Wow, so how many instructors are there? Um, well, at the time that I got um, my certification, there was only six of us in the United States, so they had just started doing it. Now I would say that it probably has tripled, okay. at least uh -huh. from there. I'm not, I don't know yeah. the number because it's grown so much. So wow, that's cool. Yeah, that's very cool. Um, 
you also have, as I'm pulling up to this beautiful uh, farmhouse, uh, some unique things out in the yard that you will also be highlighting. Yes. Uh, my husband and I, my husband had cut stumps and he left them out about five feet out of the ground and he was going to pull them out. And I said, why don't we do something with those? They are so amazing. And um, there were, was somebody had made a gnome house out of theirs just on the edge of town. And so that kind of sparked a little fuel in my mind. And then I told my husband, well, let's try one. And he's very creative and he can build. So I kind of told him how to, what to do. And then he just went from there. And so we, he built a barn and, and then put a little outhouse on it. And then, um, I told him that we had to have a church because we want people to know how important that is. And, um, so then he started doing that and took the bark and put it on the, the peaks and for the roof. And we found some, um, rainbow windows that we could do for stained glass and and then the girls all wanted a fairy house so I told them we had to have a Victorian house so while he was gone on a vacation we painted the stump pink <laughs> <laughs> and when he came back he realized that even though the guys didn't want to have a fairy house with the gnome gardens we got our way <laughs> there's enough women grandchildren and, and girls so um and then the last piece to it is going to be a water park with my grandson gavin said well grandma you have to have a water park <laughs> so we started that and my husband is um this spring is going to be working on a ferris wheel and he's got dried gourds that are going to be the seats and my friend wayne um is helping him figure out the engineering part he was an engineer at john deere and mm -hmm. so um they're going to make it so that it will turn so uh -oh. um, that will be another cool piece <laughs> and then for mother's day all of my kids came and they put mulch around they put the bricks around um, we planted flowers and it was just beautiful the flowers mm -hmm. just ran all over the place and it was one of the most my favorite mother's day uh, that's cool events yeah oh. just to have them all there mm -hmm. so yeah very cool um and the last thing i know about is the other craft that your husband is doing your your christmas present that uh -huh. has turned into just something amazing yeah and since he's here maybe we can even talk to him but why don't you yeah so um he made me a bowl and it looks like it's woven out of wood and i said that is beautiful um and then he decided to try another one but he went on youtube to see how his process could be a little smoother and once he found that out he has just gone wild mm -hmm. and so now um his goal is to get 10 different bowl styles and then um he can take orders for them and they'll range anywhere from 150 to 200 dollars depending on um it, each bowl takes him about a week to make and put together and um you know he figured that's probably about ten dollars an hour by the time so it probably is worth a lot more mm -hmm. but um anyway so that's what he is planning on doing um he has donated um bowls already um to people but he does want to do more than just give them away <laughs> so since it is a lot of work and a lot of time but he does enjoy it oh, and he has a great talent they're beautiful yeah. so i just felt like that needs to be a part of the website because it, it is a gift yes i don't think yep. uh anybody could just go out in their shop and yeah and have something like that come out, out of, of it. it yeah yeah yep. it, it's a, a gift for sure yeah yeah mm -hmm. so yeah, that's um, pretty much the things that we're excited about. Yeah, awesome. So, Is there anything else that you'd like to share that I haven't asked? Um, haven't I'm about? also in a band. Oh, that's right. Yeah, I so, knew that. <laughs> um, God has given me um, five songs that my sister and I had a ministry a while back. Um, she's gotten pretty sick, so she hasn't been able to go 
with me anymore, but um, but I um, it is a CD. It's called Dandelion Bouquet. And, and these are songs um, you wrote? Yeah, wow. they're songs that I wrote, and um, they have significant in in the CD. It has a uh, um, it tells our testimony first, yeah. and then comes the song. So um, I love that piece of it because I think yeah. it's really important to know how God touched your heart and moved. Um, one song is written at the birth of my first child, and there were some significant things that happened there that God did for me to get through that. And um, and then um, another one, when the Columbine incident happened, um, I felt bad for the people that did the shooting. I know that it was a horrible thing, but I thought maybe those people were treated like weeds. And they just wanted to people to notice them, and and so I came up with a song called Danny Lion Bouquet, and it's just about how we're all Danny Lions, but in God's eyes, He sees us as a rose. Mm-hmm. So um, another one, I was trying to memorize the Jabez prayer, and I couldn't get it memorized, so the Lord gave me a tune for that. <laughs> um, another one, um, the the Bible verse. Um, they that wait upon the Lord or re- renew their strength and have wings like eagles. Um, my sister had an eagle literally fly in front of the window of her car. And she said it was the most beautiful thing she'd ever seen. And um, so I put a tune to that Bible verse. And uh, we ca- we sang that together, actually, and she doesn't even sing. So. <laughs> anyway... Um, yeah, so that's something. And so then uh, my friend Wayne, I took care of his mom um, when I was working at a care center, and we became good friends. And he is an incredible musician. He's our lead guitarist. And then his friend um, Denny plays the bass guitar, and then um, their friend Bill does the drums. And they were looking for a female singer, and I thought, oh, that just sounds like fun. So, <laughs> I, and at the time I wasn't married again and I was trying to just keep occupied because it was really lonely. Mm-hmm. And um, so I started singing with them. And so we go to nursing homes and we're far from professional, but we do um, love to, we just sing good old songs, you know, mm-hmm. like um, Baby Face and okay. um, some, a lot of, 60s, 70s, 80s that we kind of grew up with. So, um, yeah. So that's another thing that I do. Yeah. Just for fun. That is awesome. <laughs> so. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Um, I I knew some of all that, but I know a lot more, and I get goosebumps many times <laughs> as you were talking. Um, so just an amazing, as I said, to begin with, an amazing heart, an amazing person. And I am very honored to have Teddy as a member of Be Well, God Bless. Well, thank you. All right.